Coming up on Inside Education, it's a big opportunity for some area high school students that could lead to some big jobs and big bucks. We'll explain. No longer will hospitalized students have to miss out on their daily school lesson plan. We'll tell you how this bit of technology is keeping them in the classroom. And from chief of staff to chief decision maker, the new superintendent for the Mobile County Public Schools has been named. We'll tell you who it is. It's all coming your way next right here on Inside Education. Hi and welcome to Inside Education, the show that takes you inside the classroom to show you what's happening in the Mobile County Public Schools. I'm your host, Helena Tyler. Thank you for being with us today. On July 2nd, Mobile County Public Schools will have a new superintendent. Cressel Threadgill was unanimously approved by the Mobile County Board of Commissioners to take the position after current superintendent Martha Peak retires at the end of June. Threadgill has been the school district's chief of staff since September. He's a graduate of LaFleur High School, Troy University, and Alabama State University, and previously served as superintendent of Elba City Schools and assistant superintendent of Troy City Schools. While in Elba, he was able to raise the high school graduation rate by 30 percentage points and put a district that had been under threat of state takeover on sound financial footing. In Mobile, he has been working with the chief financial officer on ways to save the school system money so it can build its reserve account. Among his priorities are to promote equity and equality, to reduce teacher workloads, and to educate the public to change the perception of the public schools. Peak, who has been superintendent since 2012, is ending a 46-year career with Mobile County Public Schools. And students throughout Mobile County will have new opportunities and more choices when it comes to exploring their career pathways. Thanks to a partnership between Mobile County Public Schools and the City of Mobile Public Safety Departments. Joining us now to tell us how this new venture will work is our Katie Rana, and she's at LaFleur High School where this new program will be housed. Katie? Well, Helena, LaFleur currently has Signature Academy Pathways in pre-law and healthcare, and now public safety could be added to the list. Beginning next school year, students here at LaFleur and around the county will have the opportunity to enroll in the new Public Safety Academy. Mobile Police Chief Lawrence Batiste and Mobile Fire Chief Mark Seeley joined Superintendent Martha Peake in signing a Memorandum of Understanding to create a public safety program at John L. LaFleur High School. The pilot program is in collaboration with the school's Army JROTC program. Under the agreement, if it is determined that sufficient interest in the program exists, then a complete academy will be established at LaFleur. The program will allow students to earn a state and industry recognized credential for public safety. We've always worked closely together, but then this moves it into a career pathway where our students can explore, understand what it takes to be part of these public service offices that we have, uh, what our public servants do, and certainly we're very fortunate that we have a very great uh, police department in the city of Mobile, as well as a fire department. The new program will give students an opportunity to learn about careers in police work and fire and rescue, and what it takes to pursue them from police officers and firefighters themselves. Once people see what we do, we don't just fight fire, we do a lot of different things. It's an exciting job, and a lot of people just don't know about it. It's just an opportunity for us to spread that knowledge. It gives us a lot of opportunities to bridge gaps in our community as it relates to how we work with young people. And again, it, hopefully those individuals that are looking for a career path that where they can do something meaningful and give back to their community, it creates those opportunities for them. Now, Helena, if the program is successful, both Chief Batiste and Chief Seeley told me it could have a large impact on filling positions within the police and fire departments. I'd like to add, the principal here at LaFleur, Mr. Henderson, says he's extremely excited about the partnership and looking forward to the benefits it will not only bring to the school, but to the mobile community. Helena? Thank you, Katie. Although the program is offered at LaFleur High School and public school students may enroll into the course through its Signature Academy program. 
Well, technology is making it easier for hospitalized students to keep up in their classes. Through a partnership between South Alabama's Children and Women's Hospital and Mobile County Public Schools, hospitalized students can now attend class remotely through the use of an interactive robot. The students can use a tablet to control the wheeled robot navigating around or between classrooms and can interact with teachers and classmates through the camera on a tablet mounted on the robot's frame. Alton Edwards is a sixth grade student at Causey Middle School and he was the first student in the school district to use this technology. What's great about it? Everything is great about it. I get to go to school, look on a robot, and you see all these other people looking at me like, what? What? <laughs> this is awesome. This is great. And I get to see my teachers and my friends. Been in the works for several years. This is the first time we've actually been able to uh, launch it into a school. Um, with the concept being that a child in the hospital not only will have a hospital teacher assigned to them to help them stay on track in school, but they can actually participate in school, in their classes, um, in order to uh, minimize the disruption in their education. The school district has a staff of four teachers and a paraprofessional at USA Children's and Women's Hospital to help students hospitalized there stay on track in their schoolwork. The robot, however, allows them to actually participate in classes as if they were there. David Ackridge, Executive Director of Information Technology for Mobile County Public Schools, is here to tell us more. Hello, David. So glad to have you here to explain what is the technicals behind all of this and how does it work? Well, it takes a lot of coordination between uh, us and the hospital to make that work. And We've been working for a couple of years on this project and we've hated that it's taken so long to get to where we are today, but it's, uh, it's a lot of coordinated effort working at the school level, uh, making sure that the wireless infrastructure, all of the things that are there for it to get on the internet and network and connect is there, and then on the hospital's end, making sure that their network and all of our firewalls and security and everything that's there all ties in and works together. And then on their end, also making sure that, you know, the students understand how to use the program and uh, just a lot of coordinated effort between the two. And it's, it's actually been quite fun. I've enjoyed working with them. Are there any other applications for the program? Well, we're, we're looking at, at the, at the University of South Alabama Children and Women's Hospital. Obviously, we have students that are there that are undergoing treatments of various kinds. But we also, in the school district, we have uh, homebound students, those students that for various reasons can attend class. And so, you know, we're looking at after we work a little bit and get the bugs and things worked out of this, we're looking forward to maybe expanding that to some of our long-term homebound students that really can't stay up curriculum-wise uh, with n regular students. And so if we can move this down into that area of working with those students, it really gives them uh, an advantage to get back into uh, a normal life. What is the cost and benefits of having this program, David? Well, you know, cost is one of the things that I think is exciting. As technology has continued to grow, the cost of uh, equipment and things has gone down. You know, the robots run about $3,500 and then you buy the iPads to go on them. So it's, you know, that's a cost, but it's a, it's a relatively low cost in the grand scheme of things when you look. And then, you know, the applications that are available, it, it just makes it a very cost efficient way uh, for us to, to work with these students. And, you know, how it's going to work, I, you know, hopefully in a few years we would see uh, numerous ones of these uh, robots running around through the school because, you know, the benefit of this is, is that it's not just a, uh, a Skype thing for them to look in and see. They are, for all intents and purposes, at school. Uh, they can ask questions. Uh, they can receive a response from the teacher. And I think today in the demo that we saw today working that uh, one of the students was actually tutoring him uh, at the board. So if you, you think about uh, their mindset, especially with students today and their technology mindset, they know uh, hey, this is a student, this is not a robot, I'm working, uh, I can actually become friends with this. So uh, I, I think the advantages are just uh, 
too numerous to talk about today. I just think it's a great opportunity for our students. Thank you, David, for being with us today. Well, Maribie Austin Elementary School was one of eight schools statewide honored recently as a banner school by the Council for Leaders in Alabama Schools. The school was one of three in the Mobile County Public School System named as 2017 Schools of Distinction, joining Baker and Citronelle High Schools. This distinction and the Banner Award recognize schools and programs that serve as outstanding educational models for schools in Alabama. Mary B. Austin was honored for its project-based learning and student-centered programs, Talents Unlimited, and its communication in Merging Technologies Labs. An example of project-based learning at the school was a unit on entrepreneurship. It also won the school the distinction of America's Entrepreneurial School by the National Consortium for Entrepreneurship Education. Did you know that there is a healthy meal plan in place to help your child perform their best while at school? For the past few years, the lunch menu at your child's school has been changing. No longer are there fried or fatty foods being served in school cafeterias. Instead, those foods have been replaced with baked or grilled entrees and more fruit. It's all part of the Child Nutrition Program's way of helping your child stay healthy, both physically and mentally. We encourage the kids also exercise. That's why when we do the, uh, the wellness policy, we work with the nurses in the school, we work with the coaches in the school because we're encouraging the kids also to increase their physical activity because you know we at the age now of the students with the uh, games uh, we are rather for them to get up and get to moving. Currently there are several fresh fruit and vegetable programs at schools throughout the county. Also all of the public schools within the county have some form of physical activity club. Well, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a break, but when we return, we'll tell you how the new Amazon Center is making a big impact in our area. Stay with us. More Inside Education in a moment. Well, my um, tenure in high school was, was good for me. Well, I was transferred to John Shaw High School, where the world started to evolve for me. So it was the Mobile County Public School System for me that started to help me to, to evolve, to become who I am today. Um, it opened opportunities for me, for me to, to, to grow, even as a, again as a student, not knowing what it was all about. But when I look back, so I'm just grateful. I, I, don't, I don't know any other way to explain it. In Mobile County Public Schools, we are redefining ready. We are graduating college ready career ready, and life ready. We are more than just a test score. We are earning college credit while in high school. We are working internships to get real world experience. We are welders. We are certified nursing assistants. We are redefining ready. Hello and welcome back to Inside Education. A few Mobile County High School students with an interest in welding or ship fitting had a unique opportunity this spring. Admissions into a prepaid apprenticeship program at Austell Shipbuilding. As you can imagine, for the lucky students chosen, it was a big opportunity for them, which could land them some big bucks. Kimberly Dunn has been following this story and is standing by from the AIDT Training Center to tell us more. Kim? And you're right, Helena. If they are successful at completing the program, there is a chance of them landing a very good paying job. Twelve students from area local high schools were chosen from about 100 applicants for this pilot program, which was designed to give them an overview of what it's like to work at Austell, a manufacturer of aluminum transport and combat ships for the U.S. Navy. For a selected few high school students, this is the sound of future success. A dozen students from public and private high schools from Mobile and Baldwin counties are now training for possible future careers as a welder or ship fitter. Along with industry skills, the students will also learn life skills as well. 
They're going to learn everything from what we call the soft skills or essential skills of how to get along with people, how to be safe, how to report to work on time, all the way to ship fitting and learning blueprints and welding aluminum. So the whole gambit, so that when these students pick an apprenticeship program, they're going to know what's going to fit their skill set and their interests so they can be successful in the shipyard and have a lifelong career here. Among the students selected for the program was Baker High School senior Mason Lappin who wants to pursue welding as a career. He was recommended by his instructor at the Bryant Career Technical Center and was encouraged to apply for the internship. This is, this is definitely something that I'm going to do for the rest of my life. The, this is the best place to start. Austell is such a, such a great opportunity for anybody that wants to get in here and anybody that really has a determination to be able to do something like this. Austell, who builds ships for the U.S. Navy, always has need for skilled, specialized welders meaning the internship program gives the chance to offer high-end training that fits their needs. Now the selected participants in the six-week program will get classroom instruction and hands-on training in welding and ship fitting at Austell's training facility. For the kids entering the program, they must be at least 18 years old, demonstrate a desire to improve, and a high degree of reliability. Helena? Thank you, Kimberly, for that informative and interesting report. Well, Davidson High School recently claimed its third straight high Q championship, topping McGill Tulin and Citronelle in the final match. High Q is an academic competition with a set curriculum that students are able to study before the matches. Davidson moves on to the national high Q competition, where the team finished second last year. Honor students from five high schools labeled as failing under the Alabama Accountability Act got together recently to show that the label doesn't fit. Students from Blunt, Viger, B.C. Rain, LaFleur and Williamson High Schools took part in the AP Academic Competition, an academic skills challenge that included a written exam component and also allowed students to work in teams to answer questions in a variety of subjects. It's an AP competition for all of our honor students. Um, we all decided to come together to showcase the smartness, the intelligence, the tenacity that the students exhibit every day in their schools. But this is an opportunity to showcase the excellence of students. They're not failing schools. Uh, did they have some hiccups on a test? Yes, they did but they did not, and I'll repeat not, did not accept that title. And what they've done, roll up their sleeves and have started to work. Viger and BC Rain tied for top overall team honors at the competition. Students from Blount, LaFleur and Williamson were also among the category winners. And the Mobile County Public Schools JROTC program got some major help recently from its annual STEM Leadership Academy in the form of a $10,000 donation from Amazon. And we want to make this donation of $10,000. The STEM Leadership Academy is a six-day residential camp for JROTC students that includes STEM instruction and hands-on project leadership activities such as rappelling and orienteering and industry site visits. Now entering its fourth year, the camp is supported by a number of businesses and civic organizations in Mobile. Amazon is a big supporter of the military. This is a JROTC program here. And Amazon is obviously a big supporter of STEM. And this program combines both of those. That's why it's so important to us today. Today we're very excited because we're receiving a check that's going to support our JRTC STEM Leadership Academy, which we've been sponsoring here in Mobile for the past three years, and this summer will be our fourth year. Without the business and industry support of our community and other endowments and so forth across, across our region, uh, we could not do this for our students who you see sitting over to, my, to your left. So this is a wonderful way for them to start out, and I'm glad that they chose us out of the many opportunities they have to make this donation. Amazon, one of the largest internet retailers in the world, is opening a sortation center in Mobile. Well, ever wonder what happens to all of those Mardi Gras beads once they're collected by Augusta Evans School? We'll tell you right after the break. Stay with us.
I'm Mac McElroy and I'm a junior here at Baker High School. My future plans after I graduate high school are to go to Auburn University and get a mechanical engineering degree. And taking the AP courses could help me get credits to decrease the amount of time I had to be in college. Baker High School has prepared me for college, career, and life readiness by allowing me to participate in these clubs and classes that I'm taking now. Welcome back. Thank you for being with us today on Inside Education. Augusta Evans School is turning Mardi Gras beads into a learning experience for its students and a fundraiser for the school, thanks to the generosity of Krispy Kreme Donuts and the Mobile community. For the past several years, Krispy Kreme has offered a dozen free glazed donuts to anyone who donates 12 pounds or more of beads during the specified time after Mardi Gras season ends. Those beads are then given to Augusta Evans students, where students sort, tag, and repackage the beads, which are sold to Mardi Gras crews and other groups for the next festival season. In addition to raising money for the schools, the project helps Augusta Evans students develop skills that may help them get a job one day. The public just finished Mardi Gras season. But this kicks off the new Mardi Gras season for us, and so generally two weeks or a week after Mardi Gras, Krispy Kreme will put their annual ad out to solicit for beads, and so the time has arrived. They um, put an ad out to the public soliciting for Mardi Gras beads in exchange for donuts. Wrap it around. We do about 3,000 cases every year that we sell to the community, and it really just helps the students learn um, employ employability skills. Our B program is definitely more of a, a shelter workshop type of program because it has a lot of repetitive tasks embedded in that one skill, and so a lot of our children can go on to um, supportive employment which allows them to take the skills that they've learned here, specifically from our B program, to go out into jobs and you know how to differentiate between colors, you know how to stay on task, you know how to reach a goal and aim for the goal and know you have a quota to meet. And those are skills that any layperson will need. And so uh, lots of our children who've been very successful. It's kind of our way for giving back to the community. Uh, we've been doing it for about 15 years now and it really helps out our local school. The name of the school is Augusta Evans and uh, we just do it to help out provide extra funds for the school. Well, I like to give the beads so I can get rid of them first because I have too many and I want the donuts because they're good and sweet. I like it. Free donuts. Last year, Augusta Evans raised $109,000 through the program. The money is used for technology and curriculum upgrades and to fund the school's token economy system, which rewards students for meeting goals. And Mobile County Public Schools is preparing its students for not only college, but the job market. Aside from the academic learning and technology skills they'll need to perform those jobs, an important aspect of that preparation is learning the soft skills necessary to get hired in the first place. Towards this end, all seniors and some juniors in the system's 12 high schools participate in mock interviews. Each school and their business partners interview students as though they were applying for a job and critique their performance to prepare them for the real thing. It's very important because our students need to have those soft communication skills. They need to be able to um, communicate, talk to, and be comfortable with themselves and with the interview process so that they can present themselves the best way they can. Students can take the feedback they get from the mock interview and refine their delivery, posture, or their responses to common interview questions. The practice also allows them to get more comfortable with the often stressful interview process. NCPSS students also have many opportunities to gain workplace experience before graduation through summer internships, mentoring, and other activities. 
Well, it's time for the fair. Science was the star at the Mobile County Public Schools District Science Fair held recently. More than 150 middle and high school students entered exhibits in the event held at Clark Shaw School of Math and Science. We're looking for a couple things. We're looking mainly for um, scientific process um, and inquiry skills. Like, have you tried to find a solution to a problem? And have you learned how to analyze your data, find sources of error, find things that work and find things that don't work? And are you able to correct those things and identify those things as you go through the process? Davidson High School junior Anthony Quinn took best of show for his project, Effect of Electromatic Pulse on E. coli Growth. Other top honorees were Davidson's Madeline Forbes, who had the top project in the high school division, and Philip Preps' Ella Fletcher, who earned top middle school honors. In addition, Philip's Riley Martin and Thomas Carmichael won special awards for their projects. Many of the students who participated in the fair moved on to their projects in the Regional Science Fair this month at the University of South Alabama. Stay with us, more Inside Education in a moment. As Alabama's first and largest school system, Mobile County Public Schools prides itself on the high quality of education we provide our students. We have been successful over the years in raising our graduation rates and have been recognized nationally for closing achievement gaps. We believe that our primary focus is to educate all students to become productive citizens. This is our commitment to them and to you. To be in the AP program, it not only offers you great opportunities in the classroom but also outside like being a member of the AP program I can come into college already being a sophomore in college so I can completely skip one year just by completing all my AP credits and by taking the classes and passing the exams. I would recommend other students to take AP classes because being a member of the program offers so many benefits and helps you decide what you want to do in the future and where you want to go with your life. Alba Middle School celebrated a historic milestone recently, recognizing its 100th year as a school. The Biolabatory School, named in honor of famous Mobilian Peter F. Alba, was founded in 1918 and was the first consolidated school in Mobile County, initially serving grades 1 through 11. In conjunction with the local historical society, the school planned a weekend of activities making the occasion, including a reverse homecoming parade and an artifact and memorabilia room. School Superintendent Martha Peake and Alba alumnae herself served as Grand Marshal of the parade. While much of the memorabilia loaned to the school for the occasion, such as sports and band uniforms, was returned to its owners, other items will remain on display at Alba indefinitely. Well, that's all the time we have for now. We'd like to thank you for joining us today for this episode of Inside Education as we looked into the classrooms of the Mobile County Public Schools. For these and other stories, please visit mcpss.com and you can also follow us on the Mobile County Public Schools Facebook page, Instagram, or Twitter. Have a great day and remember, a well-educated mind can change the world.